Hello, in this video, this is actually the final part of the object oriented aspect of this series. There will be more videos as well. They sort of extend what we're doing, but this is the last and final part. And using the techniques that you've learned over the last two videos and this video as well, the techniques you will learn in this video, you'll be able to abstract code a lot better and in a lot cleaner and more efficient way. So in this video, we are covering inheritance. So inheritance allows, let's say, a class to inherit stuff like variables and methods from a parent class. So let's go to our frog.hpp. We let's have a look at what's common between our frog and our truck. So drawing is literally the same. It is merely drawing their respective shapes or sprites for example whatever they might be movement not quite the same the getting the shape that's also the same as well just returning the their corresponding shapes and another thing that's common is having a shape as well as long as they've got a shape for each individual object that's created of the class that's all common so we're going to abstract that out into a base object class so instead of having to put these methods and these parameters over and over again, we can just put them in one location and we'll just inherit from that particular class. So let's create a class as we normally do. So new file. And what we're gonna do is call it base object. And in the HPP, I'm gonna get rid of everything and put hash pragma once for hash include fml for slash graphics dot hpp for class base object no not base i object base object so we're gonna put base object constructor and we're not actually gonna be doing much with this or anything at all because hash not hash prama once should be hash pragma once okay so and this is the scope is public so you want to actually create an object or base object you would just use it as a parent to inherit from i'm going to create a couple of methods this is going to be the draw method and the get chain method and what we can do is just grab it from our frog class for example so if i cut this out of here And now we need to get the get shape method. So if I cut this as well into, we'll fix any errors that we get from taking it out soon. And we also need a private, not, not a private, a protected variable. So a protected variable is something that's only accessible within this class and any classes that inherit from this class. So it's still not accessible outside like public based stuff. And this is just gonna be a shape. So if I go into here, I cut the frog and I can get rid of the keyword private as well. Paste it here. Instead of calling it frog, I'm gonna call it shape because it could be used for frogs, trucks, or any sort of object really. So shape is just a better and more accurate name for it. And now let's copy these into the CPP file and get rid of the comments as well. And now let's just put base object colon colon same system as before. And now base object colon colon for the constructor. We're not doing anything. In the draw method, we're just doing window dot draw shape, and now we're going to do return shape like so. And what we're going to do now is in the frog HPP, do hash include, and this is going to include the base object of HPP to inherit from the base object class. We put colon public then the name of the class which is base object now in our frog cpp 
we need to get rid of a few things. So we need to get rid of this. An error technically doesn't appear because this class, I mean, this method does exist. And by doing this, we would just be overwriting it if we wanted, let's say, different functionality that was unique to, let's say, just one particular class. And we can get rid of the draw method. And finally, because we call it shape, we need to call it shape now because that's what it's inherited. So we change every instance of the frog, the one with the lowercase f, which was the rectangle shape, with just shape. And now if we run it, it should work the same way that it did before. And as you can see, I can move around and I die when I collide with it. That's fantastic. So what we're going to do now is do the same thing for the truck. Recommend pausing the video. Just go over what you did for the frog stuff and try and implement it for the truck class as well. Okay, so I hope that you paused it. Just had a quick go yourself. If you want to just a recap of how to do it or if you need some help, this is what you need to do. So I'm just reopen it so the selection works properly. Get rid of draw because we're using that from the base object. We can get rid of truck. The original position X and Y could be useful for the frog as well. So as an extra task, I want you to abstract this out into the base object. Because that will be a, a lot more dynamic then and it will just allow you to use it in stuff like the frog for example. Allow you to set stuff in for the original position in the frog and anywhere else as well. Because you'll probably be using something like this for the logs as well that will be moving. So this definitely should be abstracted out. I'm going to leave that as an extra task to you. And remember, hash include base object or HPP colon public base object. And now if I go to the truck CPP, we need to get rid of the draw method. We need to get rid of the get shape method. And now instead of doing truck dot set size, remember it's shape dot set size truck set fill color. Same for moving, same for checking its position, and that is it. So if we run this now, build is successful. Uh, Xcode is messing around again, so I just need to force quit it. Rerun this. And if I run this now, we get the same thing as before. So that is fantastic. We now have our base object, which contains stuff like drawing, getting the shape, the actual shape itself. If you had other methods and other parameters that were the same for truck, frog, maybe other objects in your game, you could just put them in your base object and you could use them, use that functionality anywhere you wanted in those other classes that inherited from the base object, which means you don't have to duplicate code, which is fantastic because as your game grows and you get more functionality in it, this will really help save time and it will just help with code maintenance as well. So if you're updating your game. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on our educational platform, sonarlearning.co.uk. There'll be a link in the description to that. There will be another link alongside that, which will take you to the GitHub page, which has all the source code from every video in this series. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and leave us a comment. And as usual, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.